Hey guys, so today the topic is karma that you didn't even consider because I didn't even consider it. I thought that, you know, I would, what I was doing was not even a big deal because it really seemed like it wasn't, but it really is karma um, that's now coming back and giving with the right um, vibe because if you don't give with the right intent behind it, you're not going to, you know, get back what you want. Um, okay, so story number one. Ever since I um, moved down to Missouri, which it's been almost a year now, I um, like to change the traffic lights. Now, I know that we've talked about this before, um, but I didn't realize um, until the other day that there's karma that comes with that. So I was just thinking, whatever, it's easy, it's fun to do, like, oh, there's a light coming up, green, and I would just speak it, and I would command it to change, and it would change. So I, I've been doing this for a while. Then I was told, oh, I'm going to have to reap the karma of this, and I'm thinking, what kind of karma would come along with this? I didn't even, I didn't even consider, you know, that there could be karma that's coming from it, and so then when I, you know, looked into this, and I thought about it, I was like, oh, okay, so like, let's say somebody's going down the road, they're in a hurry, I've now just changed the light and now I've inconvenienced somebody else. So I'm told I'm going to have to pay for karma. The very next day, keep in mind I've been doing this for months and months, so I think sometimes when our karma, when we're unaware that we've been doing it and that it wasn't with a bad intent, yeah, we're going to have to pay for it, but you know, it's, it's not going to be this big horrible thing. Um, so I'm going, I'm, I'm coming back from uh, I don't even know where I was. Oh, I was shopping at the antique mall in Neosho. So this is a little bit south of where I live. And I was going to stop at Sam's Club on my way back home. So I, you know, pull off the road and I'm thinking, hmm, which direction should I go? If I go that way, there's going to be, you know, 50 cars pulling into Sam's. And if I go this back way, I can probably sneak in there and get in there a whole lot easier. So like, okay, I'm just going to take this back way. When I pull in behind this person and they might as well have been pushing their car. I have never driven behind somebody so slow in my life. And I just started laughing because you just can't help it. You just can't help it, but realize like, oh, this is the karma that's coming to me. Now, if I was in a different mindset or if I was like a rageaholic, which I know a few of those drivers around there, that probably would have, you know, made me mad that I was going behind this person, but I instantly recognized it as karma and, and it just made me laugh. And it took me just as long to get to Sam's following this one car that was going at the speed of snails compared to had I gone the other way. So I was shown this, you know? So the lesson that I learned from this is that, sure, I could have those lights change if this was something that I really needed. I could ask for that, like, you know, and I can do it. But when we have the intent behind it of, um, just asking like, okay, you know, I'd like these lights to all be green on my way to work today, only if it is the divine will. Then you could go out, you could go out with this joyful expectant heart of knowing, you know what, if the light is green, then that's wonderful. And if it's not, then it's because it's green for somebody else. And that is just as wonderful. So not doing anything of your own accord, not, you know, and, and I didn't realize how me changing the lights was being selfish. I wasn't even considering, I didn't even think it for one second, how this could be selfish. Okay. Now next I want to talk about giving. So, um, th this is also about receiving and this is specifically money, giving and receiving money. So now I'm in the process of, um, getting divorced. And so right from the very start, you know, my husband was the money maker. Um, and I stayed at home with the kids. I still did what I do, but you know, there was no pressure. I didn't need to be making, uh, I didn't need to contribute financially into my family. So as soon as I left, um, I just did not want 
to have to receive money from him. You know, when things are done and, you know, alimony and this and that all got sorted out, I just thought, you know what? I want to be making so much money um, on my own that I don't have to receive that money from him because it's an energy exchange. And so do I want that energy? Because it's not just money. It's just energy. So I thought, you know what? That is really not something that I want. Um, you know, I want to be sustainable on my own so that I don't have to be, you know, getting a check from somebody every month for what I just, you know, it's the energy that's behind it. I want my own energy and I don't want that um, to come into my life. Um, I just don't want it. You know what I mean? So here's the story about energy. I'm out. I'm out with my um, a couple friends and we're at this restaurant and I'm going to pay for supper and it's a lot like it's this fancy restaurant. I think the bill was around $400, something like that. So I said, oh, I'm going to pay for it. Now here's the deal. I'm not going to go into details because I don't want to bash anybody, but this was probably the worst service I've ever got in a restaurant because they didn't even bring us the food that we had asked for. There was kind of like this argument about it of, okay, we would like this. Oh no, that's going to be too much food for you guys. No, no. Like we're cool. We just want to try all the things and the stuff and no, that's going to be too much and didn't bring us the food that we asked for. So by the end of this meal, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, I'm going to pay for it. And I go and I type in the, you know, my pin card, whatever, put it in there. And I clicked, I think 18% tip. Now keep this in mind. I usually tip, I don't know, between 20 and 50% of the bill, maybe more, depending on what it is. I used to be a waitress and I absolutely believe that what you give, you get back. And so I am extremely generous with tips, extremely. But in this particular case, I was not. I was going to give the bare minimum of 18% because of how the experience had gone. Now, my the person that I was out with sees this and is like, oh, no, 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 no. You can't give only whatever percent. You have to give more than that. And I'm like, yeah, but like they argued. And keep in mind, this bill is pricey. So this, you know, they're getting a very substantial tip, like 70 plus 80, $80, something, something like that, you know? So I'm not, I'm not being cheap. They're still getting it, but the energy when I typed in 18% or when I clicked on it, I felt so good about it. This, it wasn't spiteful. I'm still giving. It was just, I felt super good about that. And then, you know, this person makes me change it. You know, I could have said no and argued about it, but I didn't. So no, 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 you can't do that. Okay. So then I click it back and I switch it to 25%. Now keep in mind, this is a year ago and I'm still thinking about it. This was the end of January last year. And I'm still thinking about it because when I gave it, it did not feel good. It was not not a good feeling. And so that was the energy that I accidentally not couldn't even help it put. I put that negative energy into that money that that person was receiving. So what happens when you receive money from somebody, which it's not money, nothing is actually what it is. It's all just energy. So what happens now that I've given in that way? What happens to that person's money now that they kind of have this contaminated, you know, um, money that, you know, maybe there's a feeling of, you know, I don't deserve this, whatever it happened to be that was around it. I was not giving in a good way. Now here is the thing. So not only have I now paid and have I given this money to another person, but usually when I tip all the time, when I tip, I give it out with this joyful heart knowing like, oh, wonderful. This is going to be so good for this person. You know, maybe they need this money. I hope that I can help them in some way. 
and then knowing that I also am going to be blessed because of my giving. But what happens when you give in this way? Well, first of all, your money's just gone um, and you are not going to receive back um, in a good way. You're going to receive back in the same way that you put it out. So do you want that? And you might think, oh, well, I don't care money in any form. That's not good. It's not, it's not right. That's not heavenly. That's not how it's supposed to be. That's not how we create a world of peace and harmony. Now, I understand that this is all on me. This was my perception. This is my feeling about the, the situation at that restaurant and whatever was going on. But um, I just want to tell you guys, when you give, if you give and it doesn't feel good, don't give. You, you are not doing that person a favor and you are not doing yourself a favor. When you give, give in a good way. So give and be joyful that you have something to give. Give and be joyful knowing that the divine is very shortly going to return to you um, in massive form exactly what you need and it will expand, increase the gifts that you have given to others. If you want to receive, you must first give in the way that you want to receive, giving with a joyful heart. Now, if I give, like I did in that circumstance, and I, and I don't give with a good feeling, um, I'm going to get that back. And I might as well have not given anything because of the energy that is behind it. Um, you know what I'm saying? Not that I would never give anything, but you, you understand what I'm saying. So think about this. If you go out throughout your day, um, let's say you got your bills or your things that you have to pay. Next time that you go to go and pay those, next time that you go to go and do it, as you're you know, making that transfer or as you are writing a check or however you pay your bills, depends what country you live in. As you're doing that, just send it out with this joyful thanks that you have it to give. That the It has come from the divine. Every good thing that is in your life is a manifestation of divine love. So just being thankful that you have that manifestation of divine love in your bank account, in your wallet. And you can increase this at any time that you want. The only thing that is in the way of that is your thoughts, is your mind. It's the actions and the words that you speak. When you give, when let's say that you're paying for something, give joyfully and just think, as I am buying this or as I am purchasing this, as I am doing this, I am blessing whoever is going to receive this money. You know, um, it's a grocery store. Okay, well, it's going to go back somewhere. What a wonderful thing it is that we have a grocery store that you can just go down the road, all the food that you need in all the colors, varieties, anything that it is that you want. It's just right there for you. That in itself is a wonderful and miraculous thing. So to be joyful that you even have a grocery store in the first place is a wonderful thing, is a wonderful energy. It's love, more love that you can access and put out into the world. Now, when you go to the store and you're picking your items, just think every item, if you become so mindful, you can make your experience really wonderful in the store. You can be so mindful. You could be thinking about, mm, okay, I'm going to pick up this dragon fruit. Oh, I wonder where it comes from. You could look and see where it's come from. Then mm, think about the person who picked that. And you know, did this person put love in it? I'm sure they did, man. If I lived in a place where there was beautiful dragon fruits growing on trees, oh, I would just love that to be surrounded by such beauty. You pick it up, you put it in your basket, and then it gets shipped across the world, wherever it goes. And miraculously, it ends up in your shopping cart. And sometimes, often, we don't even think about these things. We just completely take it for granted that this big store down the road has everything that I need whenever I want it and, we, and we're not mindful or thoughtful of it. 
But think about it this way. If you went through each of those items as you're picking them up, so you've got this dragon fruit, it's in your hands, you're thinking about it, and all you need to do is give like the angels give, give with love. So just think a loving thought about that farmer, whoever it was that picked it, that you can just send them just this beautiful energetic thought of, thank you, bless you, and knowing that the divine will bless them through that uplifted, joyful thought that you were sending to them. Next, you go over to the carrots and you're picking this bag of carrots. Take one second. It takes one second to do it, to just send out a thankfulness. By the time that you get to the front of the store, first of all, you will have picked healthier items because you will have been more mindful and more thoughtful about it. Second of all, by the time that you get up to the till, you will have sent out, I don't know, 10, 20, how many thank yous, depending on how many items that you're getting. You've sent out such good, positive energy. Now, think of your money as more of this energy. So when you're purchasing it and they're like, oh, your total is 32, 44, whatever it happens to be, just send out a joyful thanks, a joyful thank you that that money that you are giving is going to bless each and every single one of those people that you've already thanked. It's going to bless you because that nutrition is now going to go inside of your body and you're going to be healthier, filled with nutrients and vitamins and minerals and all the good and wonderful things. And as you have blessed those people, just like they blessed you by giving their food to you in exchange for energy in the form of money. Now, as you have given energy in the form of money, you will be blessed, not just with the food, but when you put out the intention behind it, that whatever you are giving to these people, you will receive back expanded, grown in a bigger form. When you believe this and when you send it out in this way, that's exactly what will happen. You will only be blessed to the extent that you have blessed other people. So if you want more blessings in your life, what a simple way to do it. What a simple way to do it. Start with the grocery store. You can do this obviously in every store that you buy. You go, you can buy this item for your home. It's really beautiful. It looks really nice. Think about the person that first of all, the artist who created it, the person, who, and you don't have to know who they are. Obviously, you're just imagining, you're just making this up, but that person still receives it. If you do everything in your life with a joyful heart, think about all the blessings that will rain down on your life when you send out those blessings to others and you expect them to come back because our beliefs are what dictate our life. When you believe in um, punishment from God, um, when you believe in revenge, when you believe in, um, you know, things like that of those nature, when you put your belief in those things, those are the things that will become visible in your life, in your reality. And do you want to put your belief in those or do you want to put it in good? You can spend your whole day. You can spend a whole day. You go out, every item that you purchase in a day, whether it's even just a cup of coffee or whether it happens to be. Just think about blessing the person who made it to made it for you and giving it in the form of blessing with money. Now you might say, you know, I don't have any extra money. Okay. Well, first of all, don't say that. Don't speak those words because you're creating it and you are ensuring for yourself that you don't. When you speak in that way, this has come from your thoughts. And as we know, your thoughts lead to spoken words and actions. And so if you even say something like that, you're right. There is a belief that is there. And you might say, well, this is my reality. Well, it might be your reality today, this moment, right now in this moment, but you are guaranteeing for yourself that it's also going to be reality tomorrow when you speak in that way. You do not know that there will not be some absolutely amazing blessing that just flows into your life absolutely seemingly out of nowhere tomorrow. But you guarantee for yourself that there won't be when you speak in those ways. So, you know, there is, there's one consciousness that connects all of us. Just one consciousness. You know, we say, oh, everybody's connected. It's very, very true. We're all connected. Um, but this connection that we have, 
I want you to, you know, imagine here that there's just one mind that controls all of consciousness. There's just one mind. But just imagine that that mind is your mind. And as you scan that mind, search it high and low for all the beliefs that you have that block the flow of abundance from you. So this could be anything. This could be any beliefs that are in there or, oh, it's never happened for me before. You know, why would it happen? Oh, it happens to these other people. It doesn't happen. It doesn't matter what it is. There could be a hundred things in there that need to be mentally cleansed out of your consciousness so that abundance can flow into your life. Because if you believe, you know what? I just believe at my deepest core that I'm going to have a $178 million someday. I just absolutely believe that. And I just believe it with every fiber and every bone in my body. At some point that does that belief becomes visible reality and it comes to fruition. And you don't have to know how it happens. And why would you even want to know how it happens? Wouldn't that be just an exciting thing to be like, oh man, you know, I knew I was going to make all this money and this is how I made it in this wonderful divine way. Whatever the divine wanted for me to bring that into my life, that is how it came to me. But if we have these beliefs and it can be very difficult, if we are stuck in survival mode, if we're stuck in the day to day of, I just got to work and I got to pay these bills and I got to what. Everybody goes through seasons in their life. Everyone goes through seasons. And, and as you go through seasons, it's just like nature. Everything in nature goes through seasons. You see the trees. Okay, here's the, here's the example. The trees in wintertime, leaves fall off. Half of them, you're looking at them, you're like, are they, are they alive? You know, you, you almost can't even tell in wintertime which ones are and which ones aren't. Now, here's the difference between trees and us. Winter time comes. These trees, they don't complain. They don't see winter as bad. They don't recognize the leaves falling off as some horrible bad thing. They just go with the flow and they just accept. And what happens? Well, spring rolls around Oh, pretty soon the leaves come back and the flowers start blooming on the trees and they become beautiful again. They weren't concerned for one moment that the divine doesn't love them and that the divine is making a mistake and that the divine has done something wrong in their life. No, they just go with the flow through the seasons. They come to them and as they've gone through those, you know, they see the rings in the trees uh, there's like that little bit, it makes this little bit of a harder shell. You know, the outside becomes a little bit harder to protect the inside of this tree. And this cycle happens over and over and over and over again. And it is what gives the tree its strength. And so the tree is not looking at winter as this horrible, bad thing because it doesn't believe in good or bad. Um, it just is love made visible. And so everything throughout nature shows us that this is just a cycle that happens. So what season are you in right now? You know, and it doesn't matter which season you, that you're in, just accept where you're at. It is us trying to fight our feelings. Um, that is really what causes that tensing up and that tightness, which is what you know, pushes the divine love away. When we tighten ourselves up, when we're expectant of something that we don't want, you know, when we tighten ourselves up to protect ourselves, um, you know, like, okay, I feel this way and I don't want to feel this way. Um, like, let's say you, you feel a certain way about finances, like, oh, I feel this way. Like it's, you know, um, whatever. And you don't want to feel that way. When you don't want to feel that way, it's the, I don't want to feel that way. That's the problem. It's the problem. Let yourself feel how you feel because it's, Ooh, don't want to feel that way. It's immediately a conflict because you do feel that way, but you're telling yourself you don't want to. That is conflict. So if you feel a certain way, 
sit in it let yourself feel it like oh I feel this way about money okay maybe you wish that it wasn't that way but it is so just sit in it and let yourself feel it and as you let yourself feel it you might even want to pause the video and just do that real quick right now as you feel it you're gonna notice that it softens and melts away and that you don't feel that way anymore when you really give into it and you just let yourself feel just like the tree just lets its leaves fall off then it doesn't feel that way it doesn't feel bad anymore it just is what it is and because you've softened into that feeling and you haven't resisted it resisted it then not only does it go away but now that it's gone away you can replace it with something better but we have these internal conflicts with ourselves all the time like you know okay you know this person is making me feel this way oh I don't want to feel that way well why not you know let yourself just sit in it fully be present with it feel it once it softens off then go about your day and, and you've freed yourself from it and you're just going with the flow but it's it's our beliefs about things it's, it's the beliefs that we have that really do dictate our world so if we believe you know subconsciously that tomorrow is going to be the same as it was today then it is uh, and if we you know believe that something amazing and wonderful is going to happen to us and and we just fully believe that then it is you know we can use this in any way that we want if we believe that this particular person is always harsh and mean with us then they will be you know we can change our belief and then it changes so here's an example so I do this with my clients if they have um, like a problem with somebody like oh here's an example this person um, this person whenever they run into them we're always just kind of rude and mean to them and they really you know didn't like to have to run into this person okay so then I do this little exercise with them when we're in a subconscious state um, which essentially this is telepathy like like I said you cannot escape the thoughts that you have about other people if you're criticizing complaining condemning gossiping about them it's being received by them um, so you can't escape it but it works in a wonderful way as well you can send out wonderful loving heavenly thoughts and blessings to people in the exact same way that you can do it the other way you know so um, as you as they would think about this person I would then have them tell that person so you know they're just imagining that this person is there and I have them either tell them or show them what it is that they have been doing to them and how they feel because of what this person has done so I might like you know have them imagine um, putting like a television uh, on their lap and having them watch having that person watch and how um, the other person has been affected by their actions so and but then I would just have them watch the person not the the show that they're putting on for them so they're just watching this person's reaction anyways so I have them do that so that this other person um, becomes aware and then um, I'll have them have a conversation you know healing this um, forgiving that person making it better and then um, you know what I would do now would be if that person had ever said anything negative about that other person or thought anything negative about them have them apologize and then just hold the intention for that person that they will have the best possible um, outcome in their life now what happens when we do this little exercise you know it seems like oh nothing you know my client now feels better blah 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 well no that's not what happens they then ran into this person and they're like oh it was wonderful it was wonderful they were so nice to me it was completely different than it was before so this whole telepathy is real it's real so when you're sending bad thoughts if you don't like somebody or somebody's harmed you or 
anything along those lines and you're thinking of this person in anger and judgment and credit whatever it happens to be let's say that you do that 25 times throughout a day maybe it's more what is happening to that person is they are receiving it and you will reap the karma from it that energy that you are sending out to them that negative energy is going to be returned to you do you want that i highly doubt it so when you become very aware of the constantness of this it is constantly happening you know people are saying oh i can manifest this i can manifest that no 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 doubt we all are doing it all the time all day long constantly our beliefs what we believe is being realized what we are sending out is coming back to us we are all doing it always 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 it never shuts off you cannot escape what you think about you cannot escape the actions and the words that you speak you cannot they come back to you so when you have a pure heart and what you are doing is just thoughtful when you just are so much more thoughtful about your life and you are putting love out into the universe for every one person for every one of us that is giving to the world with love from a place of just pure love it counteracts a thousand a thousand negative people who have not yet realized or woken up now there is an awakening and this is going to happen and it's going to happen just like that just like that people will be alerted um, forced to awaken through the excess energy that is coming and those of us who are already you who's listening who is already in this higher um like awareness in this higher vibrational state living from a place of love it is going to be easy for us through whatever turmoil is going on around us we are divinely protected and we are a beacon that is going to help whatever chaos is unfolding around in the world we are going to be this beacon of light and hope and we are going to be able to help other people now i did the math on it the other day uh and it's eight million when there's eight million people that are just giving with love um then blammo <laughs> that's the shift it happens there's no escaping it it's like the hundredth monkey i know we've talked about that before the hundredth monkey monkey experiment when all of a sudden all the monkeys on this island and that island started doing the same thing at the same time when there was no way for the ones at this end and the ones at that end to have communicated and taught each other these things it is just consciousness it is a consciousness shift and that is the era that we are in and is going to happen and this is going to be a beautiful wonderful experience for us uh and like i said winter time with the trees you know most people panic when these things happen but the old needs to be cleansed away so that the new can sprout and bloom and come into fruition and sometimes it takes extreme measures but we are all anyone who's listening to this you are on the path of this awareness maybe you're already there maybe you're at the same place that i'm at um living um intentionally thoughtfully carefully and as you do this if you're listening here just know you're divinely protected from whatever comes so whatever you start hearing whatever starts coming out whatever starts shifting and all of this do not live in fear do not panic be a blessing to those around you by trusting and knowing and believing this is the most important element believing the divine will will be done and that the divine will 
will protect you and will keep you safe and will keep you fed and clothed and comfortable. Just believe that you will always be protected under divine love and your belief will be realized. It will happen. Now, if you need help, let's say that there's some area in your life that you're like, oh, I have this doubt or I have this fear or I have this thing or I have this whatever, take it to the divine. So I did this yesterday on my way to work. I'm going to work and I was like, oh, divine, could you deal with this little tiny bit of um, doubt that I'd had in me? And I was thinking, why do I have this? You know, I've experienced these things. I know this. Why is it there? But it was just a feeling and I didn't want to fight that feeling as we just talked about because then it just causes tension and tightness and the, the divine tightens up as well when we do this and can't come in. So I just prayed, divine, please take care of this doubt for me. Um, but by the time that I get to work, sorry. Um, and it takes me maybe 15 minutes to get to work. Uh, it was about one minute after I prayed this while I was on my way, by the time that I got to the second stoplight, that it was already resolved. And I was in this heightened state of joy and thankfulness that it had been taken care of so quickly, but it happened because I believed it would and I expected it to. I said, I want this to be resolved by the time that I get to work. Thank you, joyful expectation of, of course, this is going to be resolved before I get to work. Now, here's the thing. I didn't think any new thoughts. I didn't nothing. I just felt the feeling inside of me shift and change and gone and it was done just like that. But had I fought that feeling and been like, oh, I don't want to feel, feel this feeling. You know, I shouldn't be feeling this way. Why am I feeling this way? Uh, what comes of that? Absolutely nothing good except for internal conflict, tensing up of your body and pushing away um, the flow of divine love that wants to flow into your life. But when you notice something like that, like, like an internal conflict of I'm feeling this way, but I don't want to feel this way, um, something like that, you just take it to the father and you say, you know, this is how I'm feeling. Thank you um, for resolving this for me in whichever way um, that you feel is best. You know, and I always set a time limit on it, like, you know, before I get to work or, you know, at some point today or whatever it happens to be and just send out a joyful expectant thanks. You need to expect, absolutely know and expect it will be taken care of. And that's all that it takes. Just believe it, expect it, ask for whatever it is that you want. And that's that. But keep in mind the karma. If you are asking for a specific item, if you are asking for a specific thing. Now, I'm not saying that we don't want things or need things. Um, if you need it, absolutely, absolutely ask for that need to be filled and met. Expect it to be and it will be almost immediately, you know, resolved for you if there's something that I need. But if it is something that I want, then you can say, you know, divine, hey, I want this, um, but I only want this if it is the benefit for everyone in the world. I only want this if this is just going to, you know, increase love or whatever it happens to be. I only want this if this is only going to bring me good, positive karma. You know, you can do something along those lines and then whatever happens, happens. It's out of your hands, man. You've put out the intention and you're going to get back what, whatever you believe and whatever you want and whatever is best. And why would you want something to come to you that the divine doesn't want for you? It's kind of like a parent, you know, this kid's begging for seven cans of soda. That's all that they want. Seven cans of soda. Well, is the, as the parent, are you going to give them seven? Is that what's best for them? No, maybe not. Maybe you're going to give them you know, something else, or maybe you're going to give them one, or maybe, well, I don't know, you know, you're going to do what is best for them. And so sometimes we ask for things and it's like, we're asking for seven sodas and the divine's like, okay, you know, like I'll give it to you. But like, I don't know that that's actually what you really want. Like, I don't know that that's actually what's really good for you, you know? And so when we ask in the way of, Hey, like I would love this, but whatever is best is what I actually want then when these things come in, they really do feel like miraculous blessings. They're just this wonderful thing. Okay, guys, I have a story that I have to tell you. 
sorry, I know I just go off on tangents. You already know that you're here. It's fine. Okay. So I have this story. I saw something with fish the other day when I was at this restaurant. So I'm out on a, um, I'm out for the evening and I'm standing by this fish tank in this restaurant waiting for the person that I'm there with to come out of the bathroom. Now I have considered in my life being the spiritual person that I am considered very, very, very many times, um, becoming a vegan because I just don't want to harm animals. Like I see, you know, people living in these other countries and they're friends with a ape or a deer or a gorilla. And I'm like, that doesn't happen when, you know, those gorillas or deer or ape think you're going to eat them and kill them, right? That kind of harmony does not come from that. It comes from living in peace with them. So anyways, I've considered this, but then I thought, you know, okay, well maybe I could be a pescatarian. Maybe I would just eat fish because I've gone to a million aquariums and they don't seem, you know, they don't acknowledge that you're there. They don't look at you. And I just kind of assumed, you know, these fish must not, you know, have the same kind of, um, I don't know, consciousness is what other animals do. Well, I was wrong. So I'm at this restaurant and I'm standing by the uh, fish tank and I notice, and this was the most beautiful slash heartbreaking, beautiful, miraculous thing I've ever seen. So, and I should have done something about it, but I'm glad that I was there to observe this. So there is a fish and there's kind of like a tube down at the bottom. Like this is a, a bigger fish tank, like significantly big. And at the very bottom, there's kind of a tube, you know, where the fish could go in and swim through and hide, whatever. And there's a fish in there and he's laying down. He's still breathing, um, clearly not doing well, clearly dying. Like, this is not good. This fish is big. He's like, mm, I don't know, five inches long, maybe a little bit longer than that. Kind of fat, beautiful. He's like a yellow and a white and a purple color. Beautiful. Now his twin fish the exact same looking fish swims over there to him and goes down and he's kind of poking him with his mouth, like nudging him like, Hey dude, get up, get up. And he just, this other fish just immediately recognizes what is going on. And it, he presses himself up against the side of this fish lays on top of him. It is like, he's hugging him. Like if a fish could hug somebody else, that's what it's like. And he just stayed there with this fish, just pressed up against him, holding him. This is going on for maybe more than a minute when this other big gold fishy looking dude, really big, comes over and he's just watching what's going on. He's just sitting there and he's just staring at those two. Now this one that's dying, his fish is just kind of, his tail is just moving just a little, little bit here and there. You can see his gills just moving just a little bit. And that big fish, he comes up and he starts nudging him like poke, poke, you know, like, dude, you okay? What's going on here? Poke, poke. And, but just sits there and watches. And that other fish is just keeps snuggling in, holding this fish as tight as he can. Then you see that that fish stops breathing and he's just laying there. And that other fish, his like little twin fish is just still, even when I left, he was just sitting there, just hugging him, holding him. Now, when this fish stopped breathing, when he actually had died, this bigger goldfish that had been watching what was going on and, you know, trying to help out or whatever, he just sits there for another maybe 20 seconds, sees what's happened. Keep in mind, at this point, all of the fish in the fish tank, all of their attention is directed down at this tube there and there's Oh, I don't even know. I don't even know. 20, 30, 40 other fish in there. Significant size. All attention down at this little tube down at the bottom. And that big fish, he swims up from the bottom and he comes up to his twin fish, another giant looking goldfishy dude. And I swear he says to him, like he didn't make it. That was kind of the, the vibe that he was putting out. Swims over to the other one, kind of says something to him and swims around and they all just turn around and they all just put their attention on this little tube down there at the bottom. So then after that, 
this was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. Sad because, you know, we don't want this little fishy to die, but it was the most beautiful thing that I've, that I've ever witnessed. And I thought, okay, clearly these fish also have this consciousness. They are all aware that this fish um, has died. They are all aware uh, that he was suffering and that he was dying and that they all have given their attention over here. They, there's obviously love and care that was there. You know, if you didn't love or care about anyone, are you going to see if they're okay? Are you going to poke them and hope that you can bring them back? Are you going to go and hug them? Are you going to do the thing? You're not going to do any of the things if you don't care, if there's not love that that was there. So this was just to me, and I know everything is made of consciousness um, and everything exists in it, but I didn't realize to the extent, even in the fish, you know, I didn't realize to the extent that it really was. And it, and it was just one of the most beautiful things, um, that, that I've ever seen. Um, anyways, this is droned on way, way too long. I have to go to work here. I got to go down, uh, to my office. I got a client. And, um, so I'm going to upload this baby, get some, uh, cool background graphics going that I'm going to make here after. And, uh, hopefully we got this video uploaded maybe by the end of the day, but Love you all. Thank you for tuning in, for listening. I hope that uh, you gained something from this and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for liking, subscribing, sharing. Um, and I hope that you're enjoying these uh, audio only podcasts. Love to you all and I will talk to you next time.